In this lesson, we want to talk about finding the equation of a line using determinants. All right, so over the course of kind of the last two lessons, we've been kind of working with this formula, which uses determinants to find the area of a triangle given three vertices. And then we also kind of expanded on that, and we looked at a formula to determine if three points were collinear. So let's just recap that real quick. We know that for the area of a triangle, we can basically get three points or three vertices for that triangle, okay? And we can label one as x sub one, y sub one, the other is x sub two, y sub two, and kind of the final one is x sub three, y sub three. Doesn't matter what gets labeled as what, okay? So you'd plug into this guy right here, you'd take the determinant, and if that result was negative, you'd multiply it by negative one half so that you got a positive area. If that result was positive, you'd multiply it by a positive one half so that you got, again, a positive area. So we found that if the area ended up being zero, well, the only way that can be true is if those three points that you kind of started with were on the same lot. Okay, so that becomes the test for collinearity. So if this part right here, okay, evaluates to zero. So I take the determinant, I get zero. I know those three points that you gave me, which were x sub one, y sub one, x sub two, y sub two, and x sub three, y sub three are collinear. Again, that just means they lie on the same line. Now we can expand on this even further and use this kind of formula to find the equation of a line. So we already talked about how to do this kind of earlier in the course. We use kind of the typical algebra one method, which is if you're given two points that lie on the same line, what you do is you first calculate the slope, okay? And you do that with your slope formula. And once you have that, you can plug into the point slope form of the line, okay? That y minus y sub one equals m, the slope times the quantity x minus x sub one. And from there, you can get the equation of the line. You can solve for y and put it in slope intercept form, or you can put it in standard form if you want. You can do whatever you need to do, okay? But we can do the same thing kind of using this formula here. So you'll notice instead of kind of three given points, now we just have two, okay? So we have x sub one, y sub one, that's one point, and then x sub two, y sub two, that's another point. So the only thing that's changing here is we don't have three points that are kind of known. We only have two. The first point, this x and y, okay, are unknown. So we just leave them as those two variables. Those are going to be the two variables in our equation, okay, when we set it up. So all you need to do here is just kind of go through your process for getting a determinant, and then you're going to set that equal to zero. So let's just look at an example real quick. This is not a hard concept. So we're given these two points. So we have 3 comma 1 and 2 comma 7. And we want to find the kind of equation of the line that goes through those points. So I'm going to, I'm going to do the equation in slope intercept form, the y equals mx plus b form. Okay. But you can do it in standard form if you want as well. So what I'm going to do is just kind of plug into my formula. Okay. So I know this equals zero. And again, it's x, y, and then a one. It's x sub one, y sub one, and then a one. And then it's x sub two, y sub two, and then a one. So let's just label these in order. It doesn't matter, you get the same result. So let's say this is x sub one, y sub one. Let's say this is x sub two, y sub two. And we're just gonna plug in. So I'm gonna erase x sub one, y sub one, and I'm gonna put a three and a one. I'm gonna erase x sub two, y sub two, and I'm gonna put a two and then a seven, okay? So from this point, let me kind of copy this. I wanna get some room going. And let me paste this in, and let me just get rid of this stuff. So how do we find the determinant? Let me kind of move this down. How do we find the determinant? We copy the first two columns. That's the quick way to do it. So you would have x, you would have three, you would have two, you would have y, one, and seven. And just go through your normal procedure, okay? And we're gonna set that equal to zero. So the first thing I would wanna do is multiply going down, okay? And this isn't really written too well, so let me kind of scooch this down so everything kind of lines up a little better. So I would start at this kind of top left and I would multiply down this diagonal. So x times one times one is x. Then plus, you'd multiply down here. So you'd have y times one times two. And I can make that a little better. So let me try to angle that a little better. So y times one times two is two y. And then plus, you're gonna multiply down this diagonal, one times three times seven, which is 21. So that's the first part. Let's just put that in brackets. And then we're gonna go minus. I'm gonna erase this so we can see what we're doing. So now I'm gonna go up. So I'm starting at the bottom left and I'm gonna go up. Two times one times one is two. 
and then plus, we're gonna go up, seven times one times x is seven x, and then plus, we're gonna go up one more time, one times three times y is three y, okay? So let me erase all of this. We don't need this information anymore. I'm just gonna scooch this back down, okay? And we'll do that like this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say that this guy right here, since this is the determinant, I'm gonna say it's equal to zero. Okay, so we're just setting up an equation. And it's the same thing as this. I'm saying this determinant is equal to zero. This is the determinant just written out, okay, as the steps we would need to take to find it. And it's still equal to zero. So let's go down a little bit and get some room to work. So I'm gonna drop the brackets from kind of the first part. So just x plus two y plus 21. From the second part, I'm gonna be distributing that negative to each part. So it would be negative two minus seven x and then minus three y. Okay, so this equals zero. That's why it's so important to use brackets so you don't make a sign mistake. So now I'm just gonna combine like terms. We have x minus seven x, which is going to give me negative six x. And then we have 2y and negative 3y, which is minus y. And then we have 21 minus 2, which is plus 19. And this equals 0. So from this point, we can, again, we can put it in standard form if we want. We just subtract 19 away from each side. But what I want to do is I want to put it in slope-intercept form. So I am going to add 6x to both sides of the equation. And we know that this part would cancel. I would have negative y and then plus 19 is equal to 6x. Let me scroll down a little bit, get a little bit more room. I want to subtract 19 away from each side, and so this cancels, obviously. So we'd have negative y is equal to 6x minus 19. So to finish this up, I'm just gonna multiply everything by negative one. So this would become positive, this would become negative, and this is positive. So I can just erase this and say that my equation in slope-intercept form for this line is y equals negative 6x plus 19. Now, let me copy this real quick, and let me go back up, and let me paste this in here real fast. So we're going to use that as our reference. I'm just going to go through this really quickly with the kind of old-fashioned algebra 1 method, just so that you see that this does work. So again, if this is x sub one, y sub one, and this is x sub two, y sub two, okay? The slope formula says what? M is equal to y sub two minus y sub one, so seven minus one over x sub two minus x sub one, so two minus three. Seven minus one is six. Two minus three is negative one. So the slope is negative six. And we already know that because it's right there. So what we wanna do next, now that we have our slope, and let me just label that, I'll say M, m, my slope, is equal to negative 6, I would use one of the points, again, it doesn't matter which one, and plug into that point slope form of the line. So that's the y minus y sub 1, for y sub 1 I'm going to use 1, is equal to m, my slope, which is negative 6, times the quantity x minus x sub 1, in this case x sub 1 is 3, okay? So what I would do to solve for y, I would distribute this, so negative 6 times x is negative 6x, and then negative six times negative three is plus 18, okay? And this equals, over here I have minus one, and then my y. So to solve for y, what do I need to do? Just add one to both sides of the equation, and I would wrap this up and say that y is equal to, this cancels, so you have your negative six x plus 19, which is exactly, okay, exactly what we have here. Those are the same, so it's the same thing I would argue that kind of using this method with determinants is probably a little bit faster, just depending on you know your speed with kind of doing things. Definitely if you use the shortcut for determinants, it's gonna be a little faster because you don't have to go through and calculate the slope first and then plug in and kind of get your equation. Let's take a look at another one. So now we have negative one comma five and seven comma negative three. Again, I'm just gonna label this as x sub one, y sub one, and this as x sub two, y sub two. It does not matter the way that you label the points, you get the same answer either way. So what I wanna do is plug in to my formula. Again, the first one here, the first row is just x, y, and one. Then the second row is x sub one, y sub one, and one. And then it's x sub two, y sub two, and one. So it's very easy to remember. Again, this gets set equal to zero. For x sub one, I have negative one, okay, negative one. And then for y sub one, I have five. Then for x sub two, I have seven. And for y sub two, I have a negative three. All right, let's copy this. Again, we're just gonna go a fresh sheet so that we don't run out of room. 
And let me just paste this in here. And I'm just going to slide this down. So I'll just put this out here since so equals zero. Again, I'm just going to copy the first two columns. So x, negative one and seven, y, five and negative three. So what we want to do is multiply down to start. x times five times one is five x. Then plus multiply down y times one times seven is going to be seven y. Then plus you've got one times negative one times negative three. You've got two negatives there, which makes a positive. So it's basically just three times one times one, which is three. So let's put this in some brackets. Again, it's not going to change anything, but we want to do that just to be consistent. Now, this is where the brackets kind of help you because it reminds you to kind of distribute that negative to everything. So let me erase all of this. And now we're going to go up. So seven times five times one is 35. And then plus negative three times one times x is going to be negative three x. So let me just put minus three x. And then lastly, you have one times negative one times y, which is going to be negative y. I'm just going to say this is equal to zero. And the reason that works is because, again, if I go through and kind of calculate the determinant, this is what I would do. And that's supposed to be equal to zero. So that's why this is legal. So let's just go through and erase this. And we can just slide this down if you want, or I can just erase it and kind of redo it. And let's just kind of scroll down and get some room and go through and set this up. So I can drop the brackets from the left side. I don't need to worry about that. So 5x plus 7y plus 3. No change when you drop the brackets. The negative here has to be applied to each term. Okay, so that's why the brackets are very important there. So you'd have negative 35, you'd have plus 3x, and you'd have plus y, and of course this equals 0. So all I really need to do now is just combine like terms. I see that I have a 7y and a y. That's basically 1y. So that would be 8y. So let's write that first. Then you have this 5x and 3x. So you combine those and you're going to get plus 8x. And then lastly, you have this 3 minus 35. So what is 3 minus 35? That is negative 32. And of course, this equals 0. Okay, so what I want to do now, if I want to solve this for y, you can divide everything by 8 now, or you can wait. It doesn't really matter. If I divide everything by 8, what I'm going to get is, and let me kind of scroll down a little bit, I'm going to get y plus x minus 4 equals 0. 8 divided by 8 is 1. 8 divided by 8 is 1. Negative 32 divided by 8 is negative 4. And 0 divided by 8 is 0. So at this point, all I really need to do is subtract away x and add 4 to both sides. So in other words, I would do minus x and plus 4 to both sides of the equation. So minus x and plus 4. And so that's going to give us a final answer of y is equal to, again, this is all going to cancel, negative x plus 4. Okay, so that's the equation of our line. All right, let's just look at one more. It's a very easy concept. Once you kind of look at two or three of these, you basically have the concept down. So we have one point that's negative 2 comma negative 2. Again, let's just say this is x sub 1, y sub 1. And the other point is 3 comma 8. This will be x sub 2, y sub 2. You already know what to do. We're plugging into the formula. So you have x, y, and 1. Then you have x sub 1, y sub 1, and 1. So x sub 1 is negative 2 y sub 1 is negative 2, and then you have a 1. And then lastly, you have x sub 2, which is 3, y sub 2, which is 8, and then 1 again. And this is equal to 0. Okay, always set this equal to 0. And then let's just copy this real quick and come to this sheet here. That way we have lots of room to work. Let me kind of scooch this down a little bit so we have some room. Again, I'm just going to copy the first two columns. So x, negative 2, and 3. You have y, negative 2, and 8. And again, I'm just going to multiply down. x times negative 2 times 1 is going to be negative 2x, then plus. Let me put some brackets around this. We have y times 1 times 3, which is 3y, then plus. 1 times negative 2 times 8 is negative 16. So let me just put minus 16 there. Close the brackets. And this is minus. Again, we're going to use some brackets so we don't make a sign mistake. So let me erase this. And now we're going to go up, OK? So we're going to go 3 times negative 2 times 1, which is negative 6. Then plus, we're going to do 8 times 1 times x, which is 8x. And then we're going to go up. 1 times negative 2 times y is going to be minus 2y. OK, and of course, this equals 0. So let's scroll down a little bit. And let's just apply this negative to everything. On the left side, I can just drop those brackets. They don't do anything. So negative 2x plus 3y minus 16. Distribute the negative to each term over here. So this would be plus 6, minus 8x, and then plus 2y. Again, I'm just changing the sign of each term there. 
So this equals zero. Now I can just combine some like terms. So I have negative two X and negative eight X. That's going to give me negative 10 X. I have three Y and two Y. That's gonna give me plus five Y. I have negative 16 plus six, which is going to give me negative 10. So minus 10 and this equals zero. So everything's divisible by five. So I can just go through and do that now. Divide this by five, this by five, this by five, and this by five. So negative 10 divided by five is negative two. So that would be negative two X. And then plus five over five is one. So this is just Y. Negative 10 over five is again, negative two. And this equals, we know zero divided by anything that's not zero is zero, right? So zero divided by five is zero. So at this point, let me kind of scroll down. I can just solve for Y by adding two X to both sides and adding two to both sides, okay? So this is going to cancel and this is gonna cancel. So you'll have that y is equal to 2x plus 